Hi everybody. Had a very successful glaze firing and I thought I'd share it with you. These salsa servers are sea mist on the inside and outer rim over a little bit of chino from the bottom up to the rim. Very colorful. Sea mist looks beautiful. Very happy with it. Did the same thing with these batter bowls. The outside is sea mist over chino. A little extra bit of chino at the bottom kind of stops it from pulling too far. The inside is completely sea mist. Sea mist is really a lovely color. I don't know if that helps or not. Very happy. When I make a batter bowl, I use two and a half pounds of clay. When I throw them, I throw them four inches tall, seven inches in diameter at the rim. And then when I make the lip, I make sure that the pore spout of the lip goes down below the rim. And it gets a little thinned out on the edge so that it will pour without dribbling. <clears throat> when I make salsa servers, each bowl is one and a quarter pounds of clay. When I throw them, they're two and a half inches tall and five and a half inches wide at the rim. And then at leather hard with the salsa servers, I just turn them smooth. And it's actually a soft leather hard. I don't let them go too far because then I squish them together, score and slip, and add a handle. Batter bowls, I turn the foot. Very quickly though, I don't make it the kind of foot um, where you cut into the bottom. I just make it a very smooth transition from the foot to the side of the bowl because I keep the foot quite wide because the inside is quite wide in diameter at the bottom because that's where you're mixing stuff. And so there's at least four inches of bottom. It's not a, in other words, it's not a tall tapered bowl. It's a real low mixing bowl. And it gives you sturdiness for the bowl when it's got a wide foot. So then, these are all chambray over chino. The, the insides of everything is just straight chambray, and then the outside is the chambray over the chino that I dipped from the foot to about, you can see the line, two-thirds of the way up. And that's just chambray all by itself. which allows some of the clay to show through, which is nice. Same thing with the salsa servers. You can see the chino, the chambray over the chino, and the chambray all by itself. Now, this is just a little bud vase. Whenever I make these little bud vases, I make them with about a pound and a half of clay and I make all different kinds of shapes and I can test glazes and then sell them very inexpensively at the store. <laughs> I, um, I had an order for eight mugs and they wanted them to be chambray over chino. And so you get the tricolor because I dip them from the bottom up two-thirds 
of the whey in the chino, and then I fill the inside with chambray and then dip them from the rim down two-thirds in chambray. Um, I think they came out really pretty. The chambray has a nice pull to it. When it goes over the chino, it gives it three shades, which is nice. Brown to sort of a creamy white to the blue. And I'm making the rims nice and skinny, which is good for drinking. I think I finally got a mug down to sort of a tankard shape. A little bit of flare at the rim. When I make these, I use a pound and a quarter of clay. I throw them to four and a half inches high, like a volcano shape, and then I just um, thin out and pull out the rim until it's approximately three and a half inches wide at the diameter. The bottoms are, are quite big, good and sturdy, and I don't trim them like a real foot, but I do use trimming tools to smooth them off. They're selling really well. They seem to be doing okay. And now, I almost cried when these came out of the kiln because I'm so excited. Both of these vases were filled inside with fire brick, and that's Potter's Choice fire brick. And then they were dipped from the bottom up two thirds of the way again in fire brick. And then the top was dipped probably a third of the way on both of them from the top down into Chung Red. And Chung Red I got from Laguna, I think. And both of these were done exactly the same way. And you can see the similarities. You can see where the Chung Red dripped down over the fire brick. You get this bubbly, foamy, black design that is unbelievably beautiful. So the red is like a pomegranate red and then the black because of it dripping through the fire brick I think and then the chun red does this sort of gray to green anyway and on the bottle the gray part sort of stuck on that top whereas here you can see how it transitions from green to gray to red. And that's what the Chun Red does. If you get yourself a full cone six, it does beautiful things. And then it breaks to black when you put it over this fire brick. So, <laughs> I'm very happy with these two vases. Really, really think they're beautiful. Okay, I've bent down and now I have to get up, so if I groan, it's my knees. I want to take one of these over to the light. See a little bit more daylight. See if it makes a difference. See how that black is all bubbly, frothy looking? Now I know Carla, Carla's Clay, if she sees this, she's going to say, oh, I never should have given Janice that extra chun red I had. <laughs> she's going to want it back. <laughs> you do need a full cone six, though. Look at those colors. Chambray all by itself, 
over high water clay speckled brown stoneware glaze fired to cone six with chino underneath on the outside oops blurry same thing here only sea mist on the inside I like the way the clay breaks through. Again, over some chino on the outside. Simple handle. Simple, simple, simple. Pulled handle. Attach it there. Attach it there. Wipe it with a sponge a little bit. Done. These are so popular. Oh, and this size is perfect for fitting in my kiln. I can get like I can I can get them to fit in between the kiln furniture so I can get at least 5 on a shelf, which is really handy when you're trying to stack a bunch of them in there. So this is a long video, long drawn out, but I wanted to take the time to describe what I do. I like other potters to be successful. If you like what you see and you want to do this, please do, because by the time you perfect this, I'll be on to something else. That's something my teacher taught me years ago. His name is Trevor Youngberg. He said, you can do, you can copy everything I'm doing. He says, it, doesn't, it really doesn't matter, because by the time you get it right, I'll be doing something else. <laughs> uh, he was a good teacher. Okay, so uh, here's the latest kiln load, most of which is going to go to either Nokomis Groves or um, a woman who ordered some mugs from me. She saw me at the Bay Indies art show and she wanted some mugs. Of course, the way I handle it is I'm, well, here they are. You only have to buy the ones you like because the rest will go in the store. <laughs> oh, life is good. Don't you love being a potter? Thanks for watching.